Have you ever wanted to make money as a comics creator? If so, I recommend that you lie down until that feeling goes away. But if you're determined to make money as a comics creator, then these are the steps and the ladders of success that I think you'll find as you climb that lofty path. Hello and welcome to another video from the wilderness that is Random Coyote Productions. I used to go to a lot of comics conventions. I'd go as a consumer and as a creator. Uh, in the 1990s, um, after I got out of the army, I lived in California for a little while. Uh, I went to Baycon, I went to Silicon multiple times in the California Bay Area. I went to San Diego Comic Con a couple of times. Uh, super expensive, not recommended. Uh, as well as a number of other smaller conventions in the Los Angeles area. Now, I was mostly involved with fanzines at the time. Uh, nothing big, but I could make a few, a few bucks at a table and have a good time hanging out with fellow creators. A lot of times by sharing tables and being willing to sleep on floors in hotel rooms, I would essentially be a self-funding vacation. Around 1998, I had stopped going to comic conventions. These were kind of years of darkness and wandering. Uh, but I started going again in 2012 when I attended one of the last Stumptown Comic Fests in Portland, Oregon. Returning to the thriving Comic-Con scene, I felt inspired to get back into things, and in 2013, I kicked off my Bohica Blues webcomic. Now, about that same time, the Boise Library Comic-Con, which is now called the Boise Comics Arts Fest, kicked off as well. I became a regular at the Boise convention every year, and I started building my momentum with my own comics, as well as doing some other projects in the local comics art scene. So, I've met a lot of artists, a lot of writers, a lot of garage publishers like myself, and other creators, and I've noticed a sort of ladder of professional development in the independent art world. So, let's start where everybody starts with. Being poor. The hobbyist. The hobbyist is a person who loves to draw, loves to create, and may even put together their own books and run them off in small batches from time to time. They do not expect to see a lot of money from this. They may not even charge money, and they may even refuse to take money. You see, here's the thing. The hobbyist just loves the endeavor purely for its own sake. They may have amazing talent, okay? Uh, but they just don't care. When asked why they don't want to make money off their art, they will say something along the lines of they don't want to turn it into a job, they don't want to make it into a chore, um, they want to do things on their own schedule and produce for the joy it brings them. And I really admire these people, quite frankly. Uh, they are devoted, they are dedicated, and um, they just love the art. And some of these people have the most amazing talent you will, you will ever maybe not see. That, that's, that's kind of tragic, uh, that a lot of their talent doesn't get seen that much. Um, the next phase is the aspirant. The aspirant is someone who aspires. He is an aspiring pro. Um, the aspirant wants to make money off of their art. They are hungry and they intend to go places. Uh, but at the same time, they're just starting out, so no one has heard of them yet. And so they're at the stage where they're willing to do things for free or trading art for favors, like getting placed in a friend's fanzine or fan website, or perhaps a podcast or YouTube appearance. But make no mistake, these microtransactions are being done strategically to raise their profile and get some momentum behind their name and start earning some income. They may even earn a bit of money here and there. It usually isn't very much. Uh, it's not the kind of thing that they can rely on every month. There's typically a lot of one-shot commissions, maybe some artist alley business done at conventions, they might make a couple of hundred dollars one month and then nothing at all the next month, but they will keep trying. The semi-pro. The semi-professional is the next stage of development that, that I see. The semi-pro has established a bit of a name for themselves, and they are making fairly regular income from their art. Income they can pretty much count on each month. However, what they are making is not enough for them to quit their day job. So, yeah, they have to continue to hustle their butt on the street corner of Jobsville and earning a mundane paycheck so they can continue to underwrite their true passions. Another semi-professional option would be a person who is older and has retired and can now devote their abundant free time to, cre to uh, pursue their creative endeavors. They make regular income, but it wouldn't be enough to live on by itself. They need their retirement money to truly make ends meet. The semi-professional retiree artist probably has no intention to get past this stage. 
they're quite comfortable where they're at, and they don't need to engage in a serious hustle. Uh, if, they, if they miss an episode or don't upload them a week, it's not a big deal. In my opinion, one of the biggest transitions from being an aspiring pro artist to becoming a semi-professional is to be reliable and consistent. You need to be able to discipline yourself to produce on a regular basis to the point where people have confidence that you will always have product available on a dependable time scale. Now for me, that means producing a regular comic strip that comes out on a predictable schedule. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that don't want to do regular comic strips. They don't want to do running stories. They don't, they don't like to write stories. They don't want to draw the same things over and over again. Uh, but for them, it can mean doing good quality one-shot commissions on a reasonable and dependable time schedule and a good quick turnaround time. Now, neither the comic creator nor the commission artist can afford long periods of hiatus uh, because the longer you're away, the more your audience loses confidence. So there's a bit of a hustle involved at this stage. Um, for the record, this is where I'm at. I'm a semi-professional. I make a little bit of money, but it's not enough for me to quit the day job. The professional. Now, the professional is where a lot of us work towards. It would be so awesome to entirely make your living off of your creative talents. As a professional, you live 100% off the money you make from your creativity and talent. You are truly untethered from the demands of mundane employment, and you can call your own shots and be your own boss. It sounds wonderful. It sounds like a paradise. <laughs> In my experience, there are two types of professionals. Most professionals have to wake up every day and grind. Sick days, vacation, time for family and friends, probably not. Or if you do, it's very tricky. And while you may be making your money from your art, you'll be just a step ahead of bills and costs such as things like independent health insurance, especially if you're in the United States. Most professionals end up in this status and the demands of running a small business can be pretty frustrating. And a lot of independent professional artists and comic creators, they don't always get the opportunity to do their own stuff. They're drawing stuff for other people. They're drawing someone else's original characters. They're writing someone else's stories. Um, if they do their own characters, their own original characters, their own original content, it's kind of on their own time. So there's a bit of compromise there. Now, there's also the rare breed, the professional artist that has established such a following that they can pretty much set their own schedules and work humane hours. Their work is always in demand, so no matter what they do, they'll have income on the way. It's incredibly rare for comic creators to reach this level. This is the sort of status typically reserved for famous gallery types, uh, people wearing turtleneck sweaters and unironically using terms like soiree. There have been maybe a half dozen people throughout all of history who could reach this stage as comic artists, so if you're hoping to reach this lofty status as a comics creator, good luck. So, easy money. Is there a direct path, a seductive path, to easy money? There are. There are ways to make quick, easy money. There are ways to catapult yourself past the aspirant stage, through the semi-pros, and into regular professional artistry. The quick way. It's not a story the mainstream artists will share with you. It is a story of the seduction of the dark side. Fan art is one way that will carry you very far. Do not listen to people who cry and moan about tired old franchises being rebooted and why can't people come up with something new and original. For as soon as you show up at a convention with something fresh and new and all original, people will ignore it and ask if you can draw Batman, or Naruto, or the Avengers, or Black Widow in a bikini, or Batman in a bikini. Eh, I've seen it. Not recommended. They claim to want originality, but when it comes time to part with their hard-earned money, they will choose the same tired, worn-out old franchises that they decry, because in the long run, the soothing comfort of familiarity is like mother's milk for their fearful, empty souls. Another quick way to professional self-sustainment is the path of pornography. Oh yes, do not underestimate the call of fleshly delights in ready cartoon form. Firm round heinies, gravity-defying boobahs, an acre of washboard abs. If you're willing to draw it, 
you can establish yourself as a quick professional just about anywhere. However, once you start down this dark path, forever will it dominate your destiny, and why not? Why toil for months on a 32-page original comic with compelling characters, gripping action, a solid plot, and thought-provoking dialogue? Why, indeed, when you can slap together some pornography in one evening and make twice as much? Besides, once you start, that's all people will ask you for. Because no one will care about that prize-winning comic you always wanted to fund one day. Because you'll be too busy churning out a fire hose of squishy commissions, like, I don't know, hermaphrodite Batman being railed by a werewolf, uh, for some guy in Fresno who spends his evenings in a sticky fursuit. But at least you'll be making those student loan payments on that art degree. So, anyhow, those are my interpretations of the ladders of professionalism and earnings in the comics world. These are just my interpretations and impressions based on my observations and, I freely admit, tinted through the lens of my biases, both known and unknown. But that's it for now. I do hope you enjoyed this. Consult with your lawyer about the benefits of hitting the like and subscribe button, and check out that cool description below where I link to all my socials and shops. Consider supporting me on Patreon, where 100% of all proceeds goes to the creation of more comics. Or for $1 million, I will stop. And as always, remember to support an independent comics creator out there. Doesn't have to be me, although I'd certainly appreciate it, but anyone that takes time out of their life to create something that makes your day a little less toxic, then buy one of their products. Support them for free with a like, a subscribe, or just give them a public message of support. It costs nothing, but it means a lot. And until next time, life is always more interesting when you keep things random.